Hello, and welcome to this video on the nonsense of alkaline food diets. All foods sit somewhere on the pH scale. Tomatoes and alcohol are acidic, cabbage and bananas are alkaline. Most tap water is slightly acidic or alkaline unless filtered, in which case it is neutral. This is the case where the food is processed or raw. After digestion, everything is exposed to a wide range of enzymes then acid, and then a neutralizing agent. After this, there is no appreciable change to the pH of the food. This is why the alkaline food diet is a nonsense placebo program. It is a program that advocates a 20% acidic food type group and an 80% alkaline food type group for your daily intake. This is simply silly. More so when it comes to claims it alters the physiological pH of the person following this diet. The theory is that a high acid diet creates a breeding ground for disease and leads to poor health. This acid environment is caused by a variety of developed world foods such as coffee, red meat and more. Claims like this from Al McPherson the face of the diet underpin the whole sham. We made sure the ingredients were bio alive so they could be absorbed and were useful to the body. And this advice. When choosing an alkalizing supplement, Labshire recommends going for an organic product. If you take something synthetic, you pee out the vitamins. Further claims include the ability to cure cancer. Consider this table. It has the alkaline foods that are meant to create a healthy state of being. Other than the outrageously expensive coconut water and the pointless distilled water, there is nothing especially important here. It advocates vegetables and legumes, part of a standard healthy diet. Now compare it with this table of the supposed bad acidic foods. Among the most surprising items are coffee, miso, juice, fresh fruits, and standard whole grains. This encourages the consumption of anything but classically accepted good foods something that is further substantiated by the Mediterranean diet and French paradox. Most foods that are either highly acidic or highly alkaline are biased in their pH value due to minerals. These are removed by the renal system in response to the pH change. The body maintains a series of natural buffers and other mechanisms to control the pH of the body. The most important of these, or the most widespread and adapted, is bicarbonate and carboxylic acid, being the base and acidic version of the same product. This is dissolved in the blood to counter extreme movement and act as a buffer. The glaring problem with this theory is that the function of the kidneys is completely ignored in their logic and argument. The kidneys remove acids and they regulate the body pH very effectively. Other than removing excess salt and excess fluids, it is one of their primary roles. The kidneys will produce more of the bicarbonate or more of the carboxylic acid as required in order to adjust the body pH. The other major system that's in place for this is the respiratory system. And this is involved in controlling blood pH, particularly through the removal of carbon dioxide. But what would happen if this diet really changed the body pH? The answer is a lot, and none of it is good. On the acidic end of the spectrum lies acidosis. This can lead to organ damage, kidney failure, and respiratory issues, and it is caused by a shift of 0.05 in the pH scale, taking the body down to 7.35. On the other end is alkalinity and alkalosis. This can quickly deprive the body of potassium. This then damages the heart, kidneys, muscles, nervous system, respiratory system, and digestive system. This is caused by a shift of 0.05 in the pH scale to 7.45. Small shifts with big consequences. If diet could really cause the proposed changes, it would lead to a daily swing between death, near death, and then back to death as you eat. If the environment around human cells has a pH outside of a very narrow range, that being 7.4 generally, 
the survivability plummets. Not just over the long term, but very quickly and in a manner that is not necessarily recoverable. This is why alkalosis and acidosis needs to be treated very quickly. The alkaline food diet is healthy because it is based on whole and unprocessed foods. It has nothing to do with being acidic or alkaline. An example of this comes from an experiment with university students, in which they were grouped by their blood type. They were then tested for markers that were affected by alkaline type products in the gut. Only group A was shown to be affected at all. Since blood type A is the only one affected, it stands to reason that there is unlikely to be any significant effect across the board for a population taking part in such a silly practice. Perhaps the final nail in this coffin is a completely separate population from those in Europe, Inuit and Maasai peoples. These are people who primarily consume the purportedly evil animal products shunned by the alkaline dieters. Despite this, they have an incredibly healthy life measurement. Now, if alkaline foods are really to blame, this does not make sense. So yes, the alkaline diet is modestly healthy, but it only reinforces the older quote by Michael Pollan in 2005, eat food, not too much, mostly plants, or the even older one of everything in moderation. Thank you for watching this. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.